Unfortunately, all patient care operations deal with device failure, typically occurring at the most inopportune time. Here, the infusion pump has had an error. This can be broadcast to several locations. To notify Biomed that this pump needs to be repaired, all I have to do is press a button on the RTLS tag. This sends a notification to Biomed Asset Management Database, documenting the real-time location and a repair request for the failed device. Now we need to replace the failed pump. In haste, he grabbed an infusion pump which happens to be dirty. Because we accidentally brought a dirty pump into the patient room, the system immediately issues an alert. Each device has an active RFID tag that enables the tracking of possible replacement devices. I can use this RTLS map to locate the available devices. Looking at my display, I see an available pump down the hall. As before, we will need to associate this pump with the patient and set up the infusion. Not only can RTLS assist us to find the proper patient equipment, potentially improving safety, knowing the location and status of medical equipment increases efficiency, therefore saving money. In fact, the asset management database automatically recognizes a par value problem, enabling a request to central supply. At this point, we have completed the association of the patient devices, enabling automatic communication of patient information. We've completed medication administration and indicated how we would deal with issues such as device failures. To experience what else RFID can do, please join me at the bedside with the patient. Both patients are doing well, and as part of their routine care, I take vital signs at specific intervals. These are then documented in the patient's electronic medical records. A postpartum patient room typically is not outfitted with a portable vital signs monitor, but I easily located an available device using the RTLS RFID system. It's already here in the room. Similar to the previous process, I associated the device with the patient. The device then measures the patient's vital signs, downloads them to the patient record, or stores them on the device for future download. In this setting, infant security is of paramount importance. Using the infrared identification technology, resolutions are provided to the bed level. As you can see, the system tracks my position, as well as the positions of the mother and infant. To ensure the safety of baby Molly, we will attach an active RFID security bracelet. Here we will receive an audible and visual confirmation that the tag has been activated within the system. Note the green lamp illuminates, and as a result, Baby Molly's bracelet is matched with the mom's RFID bracelet, establishing a dynamic association that is continuously tracked in the system. Unauthorized attempts of removing the tab can cause the alarm to be sounded. If the baby is too close to the wrong mother, the system emits a silent warning of the potential mistake. As I re-establish the proper association, a green lamp illuminates indicating the correct match. I observe that Jacob is becoming agitated. The bed rails are down and he is possibly trying to get out of bed, generating an alarm on the nurse call system. Additionally, alarms are generated because he has a low heart rate. The nurse call system integrates with the RFID location system and automatically acknowledges my presence, turning off the patient call and lighting the dome light. As the patient becomes increasingly agitated, I need assistance to manage him safely. In this room, there are several ways of requesting assistance. I can use the nurse call system, or if I cannot easily reach the panel, I can use the button on my active RFID tag. A staff emergency can be indicated on the tablet or as a pop-up message on a handheld device. Based on my assessment of the patient's condition, it is necessary for me to communicate with the physician via my handheld. She orders the start of immediate administration of atropine IV and indicates that she's on her way. In this emergency scenario, I was in a hurry and I did not scan the atrophine from the supply cabinet. I check alarm parameters and clear alarms, pull up the side rails, make sure the call light is within reach, and straighten the room, discarding trash and soiled linen. While dealing with the patient, I accidentally placed my handheld device on the bed and threw it away with the waste into the laundry chute. This has a shoot point transmitter mounted above the opening, which associates the RFID tag as it passes through the opening. 
As the tag transmits its position, the system identifies the device as being inappropriately discarded and can sound an alarm or send a message. Reducing inadvertently discarded assets improves loss management and inventory shrinkage. Because I was responding to this emergency scenario, a potential opportunity for infant abduction became available. Should there be an unauthorized attempt to remove the infant, an alarm will sound notifying the staff. In some situations, this may be integrated with door locking mechanisms and elevator controls in order to limit access to egress points. The system controllers may be programmed so that when an authorized member of the staff escorts the infant through the exit, no alarm is generated. These types of association and exit alarms are vital for infant protection. They can also be used to prevent dementia patient elopement and to mitigate asset shrinkage. As you might be aware and have seen, this environment is like the real care environment. It's prone to many unscheduled events, emergencies, and activities, all which interrupt patient care processes and established to ensure patient safety. These technologies not only monitor real-time activities, they also address activities that may be missed or bypassed, providing the checks and balances necessary for high-quality patient care and safety. As you may recall, I needed to provide an emergency dose of medication in response to my patient's deteriorating condition. I removed the atropine from the cabinet without following the standard protocol. The medication supply cabinet reporting application automatically reports an amp of atropine as missing. Knowing that it was used for this emergency, I can change the disposition from missing to scan to patient, which then reflects in the documentation. Finally, as our patients are ready to be discharged, RTLS helps the transport team locate necessary equipment such as wheelchairs to complete the discharge. All devices can be automatically disassociated, or I can select individual devices. I confirm the disassociation right on the screen. Through the asset management system, the discharge order creates an equipment pickup order in central supply. This ensures that the equipment is collected, cleaned, and processed, allowing the room to be turned over as quickly and safely as possible. Finally, if after discharge we determine that Jacob Smith had a particular infectious disease, we can analyze the RTLS and RFID information to determine who we came in contact with during the admission. With this information, hospitals can analyze infection patterns and provide data requested by regulatory government agencies. We thank you for your time and hope this experience provided some insight into the value added by integrating these different yet very complementary technologies, systems, and applications. Outside the pavilion, you can speak with members of the RFID and Healthcare Consortium who were responsible for designing this patient smart room. You can also speak with the individual companies who contributed their technology to the demonstration. Have a great day and continued experience at HIMSS.